Welcome to the Stop COVID Deaths webinar series brought to you by the University of the Philippines. The Stop COVID Deaths shorts make it easier for you to go to the presentations that you are interested in. I'm Dr. Raymond Sarmiento, Director of the National Telehealth Center. And I'm Dr. Susie Pineda Mercado, Adjunct Faculty of the National Telehealth Center. Together, Together let's, let's stop COVID deaths. This time I'll be discussing the situation of my beloved, our beloved Cagayan Valley, and how it stood the test of time of this pandemic. Araw-araw po is a challenge and it has become a daily learning experience for everyone. Lalo-lalo na po sa mga health workers dito sa aming rehiyon. We have learned to capacitate each one's strength and have worked in partnership with everyone, including the community involved in the fight. Cagayan Valley is composed of five provinces po with 3.6 million, and it's located in the northeastern section of the Luzon Island. Baka hindi pa po kasi alam at may twist kayo kung saan nakalagay itong Cagayan Valley. It's composed of Batanes, Cagayan, Isabela, Nueva Vizcaya, and Quirino. I'd like to discuss to you, ilan na ba ang naging kaso namin dito sa rehiyon? As of uh, yesterday, meron na po tayong confirmed cases na 88,679. At nadagdag nga po kahapon, po ang highest namin since we started doing the surveillance. 1,324 cases for a day with 2,676 deaths. Medyo mataas po ang ating case fatality rate of 3.01. And nakakagulat din po ang positivity rate namin which is at 32.8%. Record high po siya dito po sa aming rehiyon. This slide will show the epidemic curve in our region from January 2021 up to the present. It is noteworthy that our areas with outbreak are our four centers of trade, namely Santiago City, Tuguegarao City, Kawayan City, and Ilagan City. Nakikita rin po natin dito sa ating timeline that the peak of cases were seen to have followed the detection of the local variants of concern. First in March, with the detection of the beta and the alpha variant, and followed in the month of July with the detection of the first case of the delta variant. If we talk about the epidemic risk classification of the entire region, it falls under high risk. Santiago City, which is an independent city located in Region 2, also falls, uh, falls under critical risk. The province of Isabela, Nueva Vizcaya, and Quirino remains at high risk classification, including Batanes, which is now flagged as high risk due to the detection of uh, three new cases of COVID. We also would like to say that uh, recently, siya po ay naapektuhan ng bagyo at kasalukuyang nag Nagre-recover po ngayon. Cagayan province is at moderate risk. The healthcare utilization rate is, as, is at 85.98% while ICU utilization rate is at 88.83%. Going to critical na po kami. To date, meron na po tayong 122 recorded Delta cases in the region. All provinces have recorded cases except for Batanes. Overall po, the entire region is at alert level four. Uh, maganda po ang participasyon ng ating government hospitals as well as private hospitals. Based doon po sa itinalaga natin na dapat po meron silang at least 50% uh, bed na i-allocate po sa COVID for government and 30% for private. You could see in this slide that it's surpassed that for the government, the... Uh, number of beds at 50.43% and it surpassed 15% of ICU beds with 21.72%. COVID mortality trend shows that deaths peak in the month of August, though it is seen in the graph that it has already started to increase in April when local variants of concern have been detected. Sa ngayon po, um, Medyo dumadami talaga po ang namamatay. It's very, very, very sad to, to hear and see that there are uh, still cases dying, particularly even in level three, of course, and our private hospitals, which are level two hospitals. 
For the information of everyone, there are only three level three hospitals in the region, and these are all DOH retained hospitals. One in Cagayan, Val Cagayan Province, the Cagayan Medical Valley Medical Center, one in Isabela, which is the San Southern Isabela Medical Center, and one in Nueva Vizcaya, the Region 2 Trauma and Medical Center. Testing capacity of Region 2 has increased and is now at 4,442 per day with five molecular laboratories in the region. This is attributable to the TRACE, TEST, and TREAT, or the T3 program, which targets to ramp up the testing capacity. However, there are testing challenges, namely, number one, GDA areas have difficulty or even have no access to RT-PCR laboratories. There's limited RT-PCR testing kits and rapid antigen test kits. There's also shortage of laboratory staff due to them being infected with COVID-19 leading to longer turnaround time. Again, it's very sad to say now there's a lot of healthcare workers now being uh, positive. And uh, of course, if they are, if their colleagues are close contacts, no ubusan na rin po ng health workers dito po sa ating rehiyon na magdu-duty po sa ating mga hospital. This is a, the greatest challenge that I am facing right now. And the last among the testing challenges, number four, is that dadalwa lang po ang probinsya na meron kami molecular lab, which is Cagayan and Isabela. And uh, the other provinces, Batanes, Quirino, Nueva Vizcaya, have yet to put up at least a single or just one molecular laboratory. Tingnan naman po natin ang ating vaccine statistics. Uh, in line with our prevent, detect, isolate, treat, and the integrate plus strategy, yung plus po yung vaccination. Vaccine statistics show that our vaccination coverage is at 16.54% of our target population, which is 2.585%. Million. This is 70% of the population. And we think that it's still very low. With the breakdown of coverage, we could see that among the frontline healthcare workers, senior citizens, persons with comorbidities, essential sectors, indigent population, and priori priority group BNC, as shown on this bottom part of the slide. Senior citizens having the most number of fully vaccinated individuals at 204,745. This is the latest data as of yesterday. Now, let me have some uh, innovations. Let me discuss some innovations for vaccination, which include the flying vaccination teams. These are composed of our own staff from the regional office, assisting in areas with very low coverage mostly hard to reach areas. We also have the rest vacuna on wheels, initiated again by the Department of Health Regional Office number two. We partner po namin siya doon sa Philippine Red Cross vacuna bus to reach geographically isolated and disadvantaged areas or the GIDA areas. And promising, marami po talaga ang pumupunta dahil gusto na po nila talagang magpabakuna. Ang mahalaga lang sana madagdagan pa po ang bakuna ng aming rehiyon at madagdagan pa rin po ang aming uh, vaccination teams considering there's there's a lot of healthcare workers nga po na nagpo-positive. For a more appealing and easy to remember facts on vaccination, nag-launch po kami ng Res Bakuna Jingle which was composed by our own staff and a TikTok challenge was also done for all the local government units who wish to join. Some LGUs also have set up Res Bakuna Pantry, giving ayuda to those who have been vaccinated and those who wish to be vaccinated, and provided transportation assistance to vaccinees going to vaccination sites. Social media posting on best practices on vaccination was done to encourage local government units to do the same or to do better in vaccination. Innovations and extraordinary measures taken at the regional, provincial, and municipal level on the PDIPR strategies include the following. On prevention, number one, in the past months, local transmission has been seen in workplaces with poor administrative and engineering protocol. And in order to address this, an initiative of our own region's regional task force and interagency task force 
is the creation of a sub-task group on workplace management composed of several agencies, to name a few, the Office of Civil Defense, of course, the Department of Health, Department of Trade and Industry, Department of Labor and Employment, and the Civil Service Commission. This monitors implementation of minimum public health standards in workplace settings. Empowering national government agencies, GOCCs, and private institutions, and even state universities to have their own COVID response teams called COVID Worth, which stands for Workplace Response Teams for Health, has greatly helped decrease workplace transmission by early detection and isolation of cases. To add, we also have initiated the COVID Wars, meaning Workplace Alert System, which notifies the COVID response teams of symptomatic or close contact employees. The establishment of Communication Bureau, which includes local government units, national government agencies, information officers, media, and other stakeholders, which aims to inform and educate the community at the ground level by focusing on IEC campaigns that are translated to our very own dialects, was also established. That's for the prevention. Now let, let me go to the for the detect strategy. These are the innovations. We created our own COVID-19 information system in region two tagged as COVID CODA, which enables all disease reporting units access real-time data, including release of RT-PCR results. We, we have also established the collaborating centers for disease prevention and control, again, in our own office which is composed of the Cagayan Valley Epidemiology Center, its training component, diagnostics and laboratory center, also located in our regional office, and the disaster risk reduction for health center. The centers are responsible for the coordinated COVID-19 response approach. In addition, we launched the conduct of the applied epidemiology training program and data management and analytics training to equip our epidemiology and surveillance units, both at the regional, provincial, and local levels, other local levels, to conduct prompt and efficient surveillance and epidemiology investigations. This is actually a nine month program, modular, and is, this ensures ACT, which stands for accurate, complete, and timely data. And lastly, we have organized a regional contact training team specific for variants of concern composed of interagency personnel in order to strengthen and improve the efficiency of contact tracing of VOCs or variants of concern. For the treatment strategy, as an initiative, the one line or offering nonstop health services and empowered linkages in nations, emergencies and disasters was established at the regional level, provincial and provincial level, level in order to hasten the referral process and avoid delay in patient care. We also have the mental health net network services, which includes the following components, the Ugnayan, this is the regional mental health council during COVID-19 pandemic, the UNAWA, the application of MHGAP strategy in COVID-19 management, the MITSA, the supporting health facilities and LDU mental networking program initiatives, and of course, our networking for all the mental health and psychosocial support training for NGAs. Now, let me discuss the LDU innovations on prevent strategies. The different uh, medium for IEC materials used include the use of bandi bandilio, social media platform, regular radio airing, and local TV programs, among others. For the detect strategy, the LGU's use of the academic developed contact tracing applications such as HealthGuard was utilized. Ilagan City, which is a city in Isabela, established its own COVID-19 molecular laboratory. 
other LGU innovations, we strengthen partnership with volunteer doctors in the region for patients on quarantine to conduct telemedicine and teleconsultations. Mental health services provided in the community, communities such as Quaran Therapy for Batanes, Iku Mustahan for Nueva Vizcaya, and the adoption of Project Gabay in all provinces. LGUs recognize the importance of mental health as part of COVID-19 response. As an ending slide, the COVID-19 pandemic has really shaken heavily every one of us. It became a global health crisis that has affected how we see the world and how we get to spend our daily lives. But as they say, we, we should never lose hope as to what the future may bring. The most important thing now is how we get up together to win this battle. Maraming maraming salamat po, and I am sure we will recover as one. Mabalo, which is thank you in Ibana. We hope that you learned as much as we did from that excellent presentation. We also hope that you will join us every Friday from 12 noon to 2 p.m. Manila time on Zoom, Facebook, or YouTube. So stay safe. Stay connected. And, and see, see you online. online.